Philippine Celt Connections Cult of the Head The cult of the human head constitutes a persistent theme throughout all aspects of Celtic life, spiritual and temporal, and the symbol of the severed head may be regarded as the most typical and universal of their religious attitudes. The Gauls cut off the heads of the enemies slain in battle and attach them to the necks of their horses, and they nail up these first fruits upon their houses, just as those who lay low wild animals in certain kind of hunting. They embalm in cedar oil the heads of the most distinguished enemies, and preserve them carefully in a chest, and display them with pride to strangers. From 800 BC to the 1st century AD, the Celts spread from Ireland to the Middle East. Severed heads have been recovered, spanning time and space, from every land and period of occupation. When studying Celtic head cult practices, we find a striking similarity to the headhunting culture of northern Luzon in the Philippines. They both decapitated their enemies and took the severed heads home as trophies. The natives of Zambales were said to take the heads of their foes, then save the heads or skulls as treasured property and trophy, representing the number of men they have killed, and the more men they have killed, the greater their honor. By the 17th century, Zambals was used to refer to all the headhunting tribes north of central Luzon, including Nueva Ecija and Benguet. According to Martin Derada, when he battled with Limahong, a chieftain of the Zambals came to us with 100 archers, saying he wanted to go to war with us and that he wanted as his whole prize no more than simply the Chinese heads. They both used trophy heads to guard and decorate their houses. The Celts sometimes took the heads of the slain and placed them on their houses so as to receive protection from their enemies' ghosts. Martin Derada claimed to have seen a hundred heads decorating a Philippine house. Their houses were simple enough for Spaniards to call them huts, but permanent enough to permit the display of human heads taken. They both drank from skull cups. A Roman general in 216 BC lost his head to the Celts, who fashioned the victim's crania into a sacred drinking vessel by gilding the skull. The Spaniards recorded times when the heads were taken by the Zambal headhunters, skulls were fashioned into cups. Women from both cultures found the severed heads attractive. Early Spanish account of Philippine headhunters tell us that the men took heads because rank among them depended on the number taken, and no woman would marry a man who had not taken any. A Celtic gold coin in the Met Museum collection shows a woman proudly wearing a necklace of severed heads. They both took measures to preserve their trophies because they both handed down decapitated heads as family heirlooms. The Celts would embalm the heads of their most distinguished enemies using cedar oil so as to preserve them for celebratory displays. Freshly severed heads taken by the Zambals went through a process of ceremony and ritual to preserve them, which included sucking the brains out through an incised hole in the skull. Celts had a religion similar to animism, in which they believed that spirits and gods resided in streams, rocks, trees, mistletoe, you get the idea. The human head was no exception, as they believed that a person's soul lived inside their heads. Ancient Philippine tribes shared this animistic religion. The basis of Igorot religion is a belief in the spirit world. Animism is found widespread among most primitive tribes. Philippine headhunters, like the Celts, left behind artifacts reflecting their beliefs. Celtic stone heads could be considered one of the most iconic artifacts of their culture. In mid-2018, stone heads were found in Cagayan Valley at the northern end of Luzon. These large stone heads 
which appeared in the Philippine antiquities market, bore European features like sharp nose bridges, pale colored skin, some even had blue painted eyes, and yes, the Celts did paint some of their stone heads in their original context. Perhaps the paints had been better preserved in our moderate climate, or possibly retouched by the treasure hunters. Many of the stone heads were sculpted, wearing headgear similar to that worn by a Celtic stone head in the Metropolitan Museum. Unfortunately, as quickly as these artifacts appeared, they soon disappeared, allegedly sold by the Japanese treasure hunters to a Taiwanese who bought every single one at a premium price. It seems that every other nation knows about the abundant, priceless artifacts of the Philippines, except for our own people. But history is difficult to erase, for traces of the past abound. Gigantes Island in Iloilo has yielded numerous stone heads remarkably similar to Celtic stone heads, some still bearing patches of red paint that may have originally been used on them. Gigantes was named after unusually large coffins found by the natives in the caves. Interestingly, even in Europe, Celts were seen as exceptionally tall. Celtic warriors stood a head taller than their Mediterranean opponents and are described as having muscular physiques. Some heads are carved out in groups, like some Celtic examples, while most are single heads carefully carved out of stone in a prehistoric time when the cult of the head was a powerful, compelling, violent, cultural force. It's good to know that the last trophy head, cut off by Igorot headhunters of the Cordilleras, was supposedly in the late 70s. For those who insist that these are all fabrications, we encourage you to use your head while it is still attached. The Kasaysayan hunters seeks the truth of our history. We have nothing to gain by making it up, but if we remain quiet, we have everything to lose. To learn more about Celts in the Philippines, watch If You Were a Celt in Batanes. And watch out for our next video on Celtic weapons in the Philippines. Thank you for joining us in opening the book of our past in the hopes of a brighter future.